Hello and welcome to this um, same exercise that we've already done uh, once before, uh, 11.1c. This exercise really has two problems in it, two sets of data, so I've split it into two videos. Uh, so here we're looking at lumber yard that produces batches of 2x4s in 8 foot lengths and 12 foot lengths. I've already gone through the video for the 8 foot lengths, and so this video will go through the exercise testing again for the, the the variance uh, of the 12 foot lengths of 2 by 4s So I'm just going to sort of skip through it because we've already gone through this once before. Uh, so let's just pull out some of the important bits of information. So here we're looking at, uh, we've got samples of 50 2 by 4s that we're cutting and if we don't want the 2 by 4s to be too short or too long and so we are trying to reduce the variance of our cutting lengths. So for the current uh, standard deviation, so here I'm skipping down to here, the current standard deviations of the 12 foot lengths, uh, here I've got sigma of the 12 foot lengths is 1.05 inches. Uh, we've taken a sample and now we've calculated the sample standard deviation is 0.84 inches. We're going to test at the alpha 01 level of significance to determine if we've succeeded at reducing the standard deviation. Okay, so let's set this up again. We have our null and our alternative hypotheses. Now we're testing variance. So I'm going to convert these values. If I have a sigma of 12, that's sigma for the 12 foot length. If it's equal to 1.05, then that means the variance is equal to 1.05 squared. Whoops. That's not right, 1.05 squared, so 1.10, let's call it, 1.10. So there's my variance, and that's going to be our hypothesized value, 1.10, because I want to see have we succeeded in reducing the variance. So I'm gonna set this up as a lower tail test, so that if our evidence supports the null hypotheses, that means we failed, to reduce, it's either, it's at, at, at best it's the same as, if not more, so we have failed to reduce the variance. If our evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, then that's a success. We've succeeded at reducing the variance. So there we've got part A is done. Calculate our test statistic uh, for both tests while we're here, we're just doing for the 12 foot length. So the chi-squared test statistic, n minus one, S squared over sigma, that hypothesized value. So this is, oh, no, we have 50 minus one, that sample standard deviation, 0.84 squared. Our hypothesized, so our current level, this is the 1.05 squared, which I know we've already calculated it here. We already know what that part is. So let's just work out the value of our test statistic. So here I'm gonna have, get this out of the way. So 50 minus one, so 49 times 0.84 squared divided by 1.05 squared equals 31.36. Oops, 31.36. Okay, so there's our test statistic. That was straightforward enough. Now let's find our p-value approach and see uh, see what we can find. So we go to our chi-squared distribution. I have a chi-squared variable, 31.36. We forgot to get our degrees of freedom. This is 50 minus one, so 49. But if we look at our degrees of freedom column, well, just like the t-distribution, it's not perfect. It doesn't have every possible a variant of this distribution. So we'll just work with the closest we have here, which is which is 50. So now we can focus on these probabilities and these corresponding critical values. So we want our p-value. So our test statistic was 30.3, 31.36. So that's going to lie somewhere in between these two values here. So our relevant probabilities, 0.99 and 0.75. Well, 
that's not exceedingly helpful because we are doing a lower tail test and these are upper tail probabilities. So we need to adjust these probabilities in order to give us those lower tail values. So what that means is this value here, 1 minus 0.99, so that's a probability of 0 0.01, and this one to get the lower tail probability is a value of 0 0.025. So there's my relevant probabilities for my p-value. My p-value is going to be something less than 0 0.025, greater than 0 0.01. So that's what we need to report for our p-value. Coming back here, I have a p-value less than 0 0.025, greater than 0 0.01. Well, look at there's our level of significance. Alpha was 0 0.01. So based on this result, our p-value is something greater than 0 0.01. So that means that we do not reject, which means that we have failed to successfully, uh, we have failed to reduce uh, the variance and the cutting lengths of our 12-foot 2x4s. Okay, so now we can go back and verify that with our critical value approach. Coming back to our chi-squared, our alpha was 0 0.01. So again, here's that 0 0.01 value, not 0.99, that was the upper tail. We want the lower tail, so we're looking for, uh, let me clear some space here. If this is our chi-squared distribution, something like this, our rejection space is in that lower tail, and this is giving us upper tail probabilities. So it's giving us this area up here. If I want alpha equals 0 0.01 in the lower tail, then that means this upper tail probability is 0.99. So that's why we're looking at this value here. That's a critical value then of 29 0.707. Our test statistic, I shouldn't have erased it, our test statistic was 31.36, so that's something greater than 29.7, so that falls into our do not reject space. Okay, so this process, you'll notice it's very similar to the test when we were using the T distribution or the Z distribution. For a lower tail test, that rejection region is in the lower tail. For an upper tail test, it would be in the upper tail. Calculating the p-values uh, must go according to that same, that same methodology. We need the probabilities in the lower tail for a lower tail test or upper tail for an upper tail test. The challenge in working with the chi-square distribution at least in this case, is that that table is only giving us upper tail probabilities. So if we want those lower tail values, we have to make little adjustments to make sure that we are dealing with the right values. A very common mistake here is that you're given an alpha of 0.01, and students will think, okay, 0.01 is my probability, there's 0.01, and they'll find that as the critical value. It's the wrong end of the distribution. That would be the case if you were doing an upper tail test. For this lower tail test, a little bit more complicated. We have to make these adjustments to make sure that we're getting those values on the lower tail of the distribution. Okay, so that's it. Both our p-value approach and our critical value approach lead us to a, a failure to reject, which means that we have failed to improve the accuracy or reduce the variance in the cutting lengths of these 12 foot 2x4s. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. Bye bye.